Hello everybody, welcome back. Day 10 of isolation. Today you'll see I've got little Georgie with me. Um, now, the reason why I've got him with me is because he's going to be one of our examples today of olfactory communication, also known as uh, scent or smell. Um, so let us explain why. So little Georgie is what you'd call a ferret. These guys have been domesticated for, for about 2,500 years now. Uh, they originate uh, from your European polecat, uh, was their wild descendant. Uh, they come from the genus Mustela and uh, the family Mustelidae. So this would include stuff like genets and um, honey badgers and what have you, weasels as well. Now, these guys are known for making quite a bad smell when they're upset, uh, just like your skunks do. Um, these mixtures are made by a pair of anal glands. Now, most carnivores have anal glands, but they don't use them for defense so much. They rather use them for, as we were mentioning, olfactory communication. Besides George, other carnivores have also got a pair of anal glands where skin secretions are processed by bacteria to create odorous mixtures. These skin secretions are then processed by bacteria to create a mixture of different odors, um, which are then employed by different animals, mostly to mark territories. Now, here's a nice example over here. This is an anal pasting from a brown hyena. Now, you'll see that there's a lighter pasting and then a darker pasting. Now, it is said that your darker pasting is to um, indicate to family members of the brown hyena because they stay in small family clans that this area has already been checked uh, for fodder because they go out and they forage on their own. So the lone hyena will come out, look in this area, leave a pasting. The darker one indicates that this area has already been searched. So his family will know that it's a waste of time to come and look for food over here. Now your lighter secretion which will sting for up to 21 days. The darker one only seven days. The lighter secretion is to indicate to other hyenas from other families that this territory is already taken and they must stay out. Besides your carnivores, other animals will also use olfactory communication. If we look down here, here's another example. So what we're looking at here is what you'd call a midden. Now, midden, M-I-D-D-E-N, uh, is also used besides your wildebeest by other antelope and then also by rhinoceros. White rhinoceros will create large midden. Now, the reason why they create this is to leave a message for when they're not there. So this is almost like an animal's Facebook. Now, the messages that will be left here will be stuff like the animal's sex, the animal's age, the animal's social status, the individual uh, status of the animal, the reproductive condition of the animal, uh, the group membership of the animal, and then also the emotional state of the animal. Uh, so all these messages will be left here long after the animal has left. So now that I've explained on how olfactory messages are left behind, uh, we're going to go through how the animals actually read these messages. Once the message has been left behind, either by pasting or midden, you need to be able to read these messages. Now, scent is the obvious uh, means of um, picking up these messages by smelling them, uh, but animals actually use another means. This is called the Jacobson's organ, also known as the vomeronasal nasal organ. Simply put, it's a patch of sensory cells within the main nasal chamber that detect heavy moisture-borne odor particles. The first illustration uh, was in 1703 by the Dutch anatomist Frederick Reich. But the discovery is credited to the Danish physician and anatomist Ludwig Levi Jacobson, hence the name Jacobson's organ. Um, mainly you'll find that male animals will pick up the scent of females' urine uh, almost by tasting it. From there they'll pull a funny looking face. This face is known as the Fleming Grimace. I'm going to leave some examples here for you guys to take a look um, of male animals busy testing the urine. This is obviously to see if the female animal is in season or not. As you'll see, the animal's head is raised up with the lips drawn back. The nose is wrinkled, the mouth is partly opened uh, for inhalation. Now, this behavior is similar to that seen in ruminants, 
Um, so your uh, ruminating animals, your four-chambered animals, um, your horses. Um, however, the philtrum of your felines, so your cats, uh, their upper lip prevents it from a complete inhalation. So they don't do such a big uh, phlegm and grimace as you'll see horses and um, hooved, other hooved animals do. I hope this has given you guys a better understanding of olfactory communication and animal scent marking. Until next time, stay safe and wash your hands.